very thankful that the Lord uh, gave Northeast Ohio Steve Erickson and his lovely wife Jane. And uh, we'll rent him out to you guys in Nashville uh, for the right price someday. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is a wonderful way to just kind of summarize uh, so much of what we've got. Don't you think? And uh, like we said, I think we have all of your email. If you don't think that we have your email, make sure that you write it on a piece of paper and stick it in the basket on the table before you go, because then we can send you a copy of what you just saw. And um, you can just dive into it and, and reflect on it and think about it. And it'll reinforce the principles that uh, that Davis shared, and uh, and of course this is this is one thing that's important. Somebody said, you know, repetition is the essence of learning, right? And so um, rather than just say, "Wow, that was cool and awesome," it allows us to be able to revisit it and chew on it, and and then even ask the Holy Spirit, say, you know, highlight to me the things that I really need to look at now. And so uh, we wanted you to see that before. Now we are wrapped up by moving into some some prayer time. And so Dave is going to come and uh, facilitate that. So Dave, why don't you? It's okay. I'm going to sit here and uh, have Ryan just come up in a moment here. Um, so there's two two pieces. I just want to encourage us as we just maybe move into some prayer time. Um, first, like, what what is your just just one or two, no more than two, what's your one or two takeaways from the last couple of days? You know, could I encourage you to just, as we were before the Lord, just write those down? You know, it's, you know, we've all been to these conferences before, and we, yes, and, and then, you know, we get home, and there's 14 baby diapers we have to change, and we forget that we're supposed to disciple the nations, you know? And so what are those one or two things, those revelation points that you know, okay, if God took the time to reveal this to me, how am I supposed to obey it? So so take some time and maybe think about that. And then here's the other thing. You know, for me in my life, there's moments in time where I feel like God marked one of those is that story I shared. It was on an airplane with Lauren. And when he said that, like I didn't realize in the moment, even though I knew it was big, how big it would be in my life. People say things. God speaks to us. We hear something. We're taking time alone with him in worship. And But the one piece I was telling Tom that I, I would love to see us address is just, again, getting before him in worship and then is there anything that you, any business you need to do with God to respond to him and what he's initiated about you being a disciple maker and the structures you lead becoming disciple making structures? The intentionality of that is Steve just highlighted. And just to, to literally kind of make this a, you know, an altar just to come. And you can certainly sit in your chair, but sometimes you know how it's just like, for me, it's good to go do something. That, that kind of helps reinforce it in me. But just to be able to, to reinforce to the Lord, I hear you. I see you. I don't, and it's okay to say, I don't know all the pieces yet, but I want you to know I'm in. For some of you, there might need to be like my Saskatoon friends, a, a place of repentance where you've just, it might have been something not, not like, purposely but something you've been fighting for many years because I just I just don't like it I like evangelism better you know or I like just getting people into worship but you just know deep inside God, God's been circling this thing for decades in my life and there might have to be a Lord I I just want to make this day a marking point of repentance forgive me that I haven't engaged and I've kind of done the la 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 I didn't want to hear it, it might that might be a place for you Okay, it might just be a place for you today of saying, God, I'm all in. I need a fresh and filling of the Holy Spirit for this. And and feel free to go to somebody, you know. Go to somebody in the room here that maybe you've known and you've trusted and just say, hey, would you, I'm all in. I just would like to ask you to pray. Because remember, Jesus gave them the Great Commission. Someone challenged me one day on this. They said, you know, the Great Commission is not the last thing Jesus told us to do. You know, Randy Young, many of you know Randy. Randy's been a dear friend of mine for decades and Randy was the first one I heard say that, you know, it's like 
the last command has become our least concern. And then someone disrupted that in me and said, that's actually not the last command. The last command was to go wait till the Holy Spirit comes upon you. But of course, it's tied to that one, isn't it? For some of you, you might just need to say, I, like I'm living, just Dave speaking, I'm living in a land right now because I'm, I'm dealing with my 88-year-old parents, married 64 years, and they can't live together because they're mines. And so my brother Tom and his wife, uh, Mindy and Cheryl and I are, are walking that road. We've been on it. It's been intense the last three years. Um, my church, it's just meaning the church I'm a part of. I don't pastor it, but we just had a major blow up, major blow up about three months ago. It's just been unbelievable. It just continues to be unbelievable. Just in, so I've chatted with Joe and Jeff and several people here about it and Dinah and, and in the midst of this, I had been thinking of some things when we were away in Hawaii for three weeks, and then our friend Steve Fry at the Messenger Conference shared something similar. And and it, there's a chapter in Discipleship Journey on the grace of God, and the very last part of the fourth lesson is, who's a candidate for the grace of God? The sinner, the weak, the needy, the powerless, and the humble. And I have found myself oftentimes in that place. And so the language I use is embrace humility or engage humility, which means it's a choice. I engage humility and I usually use one of those three things or more often not these days. I'm weak, I'm needy, I'm powerless. And then it's surrendering everything to Jesus, all of it. Dad, my dad was a bear today. Lord, I just give you dad. Thank you that the blood of Jesus is shed for him. You love him even in his bareness state. So it's engaging humility, surrendering all, and then reminding ourselves out of Philippians, you know, that be anxious for nothing, but in everything, you know, that portion and the peace of God, which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds. And so I just think in a day where maybe some of us have gotten used to pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps or sucking it up and just making it through, I don't think that's appropriating all Jesus has for us. It's starting with engaging humility by acknowledging where you are, surrendering it to God, and then be able to ask him for peace. As our friend Steve Fry shared something similar, he said in a situation he was in, he had to do it 20 times that one day. So don't get caught in the thing of, well, if you have to ask more than once, it means you don't have enough faith. That's a bunch of hooey. That's not biblical. Just ask as much as you need, because he's willing to give as much as we have need for. So Lord, today, just as we wrap this up. I know that the way that your Holy Spirit does things is you take all the words of the, the stories that were shared by people, the things that I've shared, the worship moments we had, and you, you drop things in our heart. And so just to tie a bow on these about 24 hours or so we've had together, but what are those couple of things? One, two, maybe three at the most things that you've really highlighted to us that now it's not like a teaching point, it's an obedience point. Would you highlight that for us, Lord? What is it that you've said to us while we're here? And Lord, we want to be proactive in responding to you as well to say, I'm in. Or do in me what you need to do to make me a really good disciple maker. That I would not only have children and grandchildren, but great grandchildren in the Lord. That even when I'm gone, even when I'm gone, that it goes eight generations and 12 generations, and 40 generations. And that that 32nd generation may not know it was ever attached to us, but you do. And you take pleasure in that. You're the only one, Lord, that can breathe life on generational stuff. But it's how you did it. It's how that thing, lovely thing, amazing thing called the church was birthed. It was through disciple making. And so, Lord, would you just allow us, whether it's in repentance, whether it's in just the need for our own desperate need for fresh and filling. God, would you just come and would you just do a work as we close? So I'm just going to let Ryan just kind of lead us in, in the way that he feels he wants to. And, and I just want to encourage us just two things. One, What's your takeaways? And number two, how are, how can you use this moment to really mark 
your commitment to be a disciple maker. And of course, as Tom said, because I know this is part of your culture, good culture, you know, if, if God gives you something for somebody, feel free to go. Just can I encourage you to be sensitive to them. If they're kind of in a moment with God, just let them be. Wait till they're done with that moment so that they can have that time. But, but feel free to let the Holy Spirit speak through each of you. And um, Tom or Jeff or someone will come up and tell us when it's time just to wrap up together. So, Lord, we give you this moment. Holy Spirit, would you tie the bow on it where we need to be marked, not just by emotion or being ramped up, but just, God, would you, would you mark this day that this might be one of those days where we drew the line in the sand and stepped across it and say, as for me and my house, we will make disciple makers. So Lord, would you come be in our midst?